All right. Welcome back, everyone. Ready for another deep dive. Definitely. Awesome. <laughs> Today, we're tackling something really mind-blowing. Uh, self-organizing robot swarms. Ooh, yeah. Specifically, this new approach called SunNS. It might just change how we think about swarm intelligence. I mean, think about it, listeners. You're here because you're interested in cutting-edge robotics. You want to know how to make these swarms, you know, more efficient. Right. More adaptable. So that's what we're diving into today, a research article that's all about this new SunNS thing. It lets robots basically like form these dynamic hierarchies. Right. And it helps them accomplish tasks in a smarter, more organized way. Yeah, it's a super fascinating area of research, especially given, you know, we all want to make swarms more efficient and adaptable. Traditional approaches have really struggled with it's that. It's like herding cats, right? right. Yeah. I mean, individually, robots, they're great. They can do their thing. But when you try to coordinate a whole swarm mm -hmm. to do something really complex, that's where things get messy. Too much control from the top, you know, centralized control, it creates bottlenecks. But then purely decentralized systems, well, they can be unpredictable. Absolutely. And that's exactly where Sun and S comes in, this research trying to find that sweet spot, you know, yeah. between control and flexibility. Okay. So walk me through it. How do these uh, self-organizing nervous systems actually work? So imagine, right, a group of robots all working together. With Sun and S, they can like spontaneously form a hierarchy. Certain robots, just depending on what's happening, become temporary leaders. So like brain robots coordinating their own subswarms. Mm, so it's not like a fixed hierarchy then? Not at all, no. Interesting. Any robot can become the brain. And this is what makes the system so resilient, you know, because there's no single point of failure. Makes sense. That's great for reliability. But how does that actually play out in a real task? You know, what does it look like? Okay, let's say you have a swarm navigating an obstacle course. Yeah. So with Sun and S, the robots would balance their own goals, right? like right. avoiding obstacles. But they also have to keep in mind the overall goal of the swarm, reaching the destination. Well, I... So it's this dynamic interplay between the local and the global control. Sounds really complex to coordinate. Were they able to actually like test this out? They did. And with really impressive results, they ran these proof of concept missions with actual robot swarms. Wow. So not just simulations, like the real deal. Oh, yeah. Real robots. Yeah. For example, one test focused on collective sensing and actuation. The robots had to sweep an area, but they had to adjust their formation as the space narrowed. Like a flock of birds changing formation. Exactly like that. The robots at the edge of the swarm, they feed sensor data back to the brain robot, which then guides the whole swarm to reconfigure. That's some serious coordination. What other, like, capabilities did they demonstrate? Well, another really fascinating test involved decision making. Okay. Picture this. The robots have to choose the widest path through an opening. All right. Sounds pretty straightforward. How does Sun and S fit in? So get this. The robots actually bid to become the brain based on their information on the width of that opening. So the one with the best data, they take the lead. Wow. So it's like a decentralized election for leadership based on who's got the best info at that moment. That's amazing. And it seems like that could be applied to so many different scenarios. You got it. They even tested like a search and rescue scenario where a Sun NS splits into smaller teams to search for missing robots. Shows how flexible and adaptable the system is for complex tasks. So not just coordinating, but self-organizing for different objectives. Really interesting. Precisely. And this is just the beginning, you know. Yeah. What's really exciting is the potential of Sun and S to scale up. You mean working with larger swarms? Yeah, larger swarms. They ran simulations with up to 250 robots, and the system kept functioning efficiently. That kind of scalability opens up so many possibilities. That's a lot of robots working together smoothly. But realistically, robots can malfunction. How does Sun and S handle that? That's a key advantage of this system. Fault tolerance. Yeah. They tested it specifically for resilience to individual robot failures, even like temporary system-wide disruptions. So even if some robots go offline, the whole swarm doesn't just stop. Exactly. The interchangeable leadership, that self-healing nature of Sun S makes it super robust. Right. And that's crucial for real-world applications. This is groundbreaking stuff. It sounds like Sun and S could really revolutionize the way we think about robotics. Yeah. But I'm sure there are still challenges to overcome. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what we'll explore next, the broader implications of Sun S and, you know, some of the hurdles that lie ahead. Okay. So we've seen that Sun and S is incredible, like technically. 
But what about the bigger picture? Like, where could we actually use this technology? Oh, tons of places. The possibilities are huge. Yeah. I mean, automation, for one. I imagine factories, right? Okay, yeah. Swarms of robots adapting to production changes all the time. Optimizing workflows on the fly. That'd be a huge leap forward. Oh, right? totally. Like, not just program for one task, but learning and adapting as they go. Exactly. And that adaptability could be huge in other industries, too. Logistics, for example. Okay, yeah, logistics. Imagine swarms of delivery robots navigating cities, rerouting themselves if there's traffic or obstacles. No more delayed packages. I like it. Right. But what about, you know, stuff beyond just commercial applications? Yeah. Sunnydesk could tackle some really critical challenges. Like, wh what are you thinking? Disaster relief, for instance. Okay, yeah. Swarms of robots searching for survivors in collapsed buildings. Assessing damage in dangerous areas. Delivering aid. That's powerful. Robots going where it's too risky for humans. Exactly. And remember, Sun and S is fault tolerant. Right. So these swarms could operate in really tough environments where communication's down, where robots get damaged. Like a team of first responders, never getting tired, adapting to anything. Exactly. And we can go even further. What about environmental monitoring? Hmm. Interesting. Swarms could explore the ocean floor, gather data on pollution, track marine life. So not just improving our world, but understanding and protecting the natural world, too. Yeah. And think about it. Sun and Est lets swarms cover huge areas, adapt to changes. We could gather data on a scale we've never seen before. It all sounds really promising. But let's be real for a sec. What hurdles are there? What needs to happen before we see Sun and Est everywhere? Well, one big one is safety. Yeah, of course. Making yeah. sure these swarms are reliable, especially around humans. You got to be sure they're predictable, won't cause any harm. Totally. So robust testing is key. Fail-safe mechanisms. We also have to think about ethics, right? Giving robots more autonomy. What kind of ethical stuff are we talking? Like who's responsible if a swarm messes up, causes damage, mm -hmm. or if it makes a decision that leads to, you know, an unintended consequence? Those are big questions. It sounds like the rules around robotics, you know, laws and ethics, will have to catch up to this tech. For sure. And then there's public perception, too. People might worry about robots taking jobs or even, you know, becoming a threat. Yeah, I can see that. So we need to communicate clearly, educate people about this technology so they can understand it and trust it. It's a balance, right? Absolutely. Acknowledging the risks, but also seeing the huge benefits Sun S could bring. Exactly. Lots to think about. This technology could change so much about our lives, but we have to approach it carefully responsibly. Couldn't agree more. I'm really glad we're having this conversation. This research has given me a lot to think about. Me too. It feels like we're on the edge of something new in robotics, where robots aren't just tools, but collaborators, helping us solve the world's toughest problems. We've talked about the potential, but I got to ask about the nuts and bolts, the technical stuff. You mentioned being impressed with how they actually made this work in those real world tests. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. One thing that really stood out was this idea of uh, reconfigurable morphology. Reconfigurable what now? Basically, the swarm, it's not stuck in one shape. It can actually like change its structure depending on the task. So not just individual robots adapting, but the whole swarm reshaping itself as needed. Exactly. And they did this using a mix of ground robots and, get this, quadcopters. Wow, quadcopters. Like drones. Yep. Drones, they give you that aerial perspective, right? Yeah. Like scouts. Makes sense. So they're not just for show. No, no. They help the ground robots navigate, coordinate. It's a big advantage. So they're feeding intel to the swarm's decision making. Exactly. And they can actually participate in tasks, too, you know? Yeah. Moving stuff, carrying payloads. It's pretty cool. So ground robots doing the heavy lifting, quadcopters providing air support. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. That's a great way to put it. And of course, communication between them is crucial. Yeah. How do they manage that? Combination of things. Vision-based tracking, wireless communication, keeps them connected, sharing information. It's amazing. It's decentralized, robots making their own choices, but the whole swarm works together. It really is a but really elegant approach. But, you know, got to remember, this research is still early days. Of course. Yeah. So much more to learn. Where do you see this tech going long term? I think we'll see Sun and S in more and more complex systems. Imagine swarms that can learn from experience adapt to even crazier environments, do things that require way more autonomy. Swarms that aren't just adaptable, but actually intelligent. Exactly. The possibilities are, well, pretty much endless. <laughs> but 
you know, as it develops, we got to keep those ethical questions in mind. Right. That's crucial. Develop it responsibly. Make sure it benefits everyone. Absolutely. Well, this has been a mind blowing deep dive. Really makes you think. We've gotten a glimpse into a future where robots aren't just tools, they're partners working with us to solve the world's biggest problems. I couldn't have said it better myself. And everyone listening, thanks for joining us on this journey into the incredible world of self-organizing robot swarms. Hope you learned something new, maybe even had your mind blown a little. <laughs> Until next time.